Traveling is already expensive and you don't need to make it any more expensive by going to these exchange booths to exchange your money for foreign currency or selecting the wrong option at an ATM. In this video, I'm gonna show you some money saving tips on how to get foreign currency when you're traveling abroad. My name is Max and I help people maximize their airline miles, hotel points and credit card points. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button down below and let's get started. Before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Airlo. Airlo is also a money savings tip as well. One time my parents went on a trip abroad and they came back with a $400 cell phone bill. And the reason why there was a $400 cell phone bill was because of international data roaming. And that's when I introduced them to Airlo. Airlo is a digital eSIM store where you can buy eSIMs for 200 plus countries. And there's also regional eSIMs and global eSIMs as well. The regional eSIMs is one of my favorite products because when I'm traveling to multiple countries and within one region, I can just buy one eSIM and install one eSIM and that covers me for multiple countries within that same region. For example, last fall I went to Taiwan and South Korea. I installed the eSIM and when I landed in Taiwan, I had cell phone data. And then when I flew to South Korea, I automatically had cell phone data because I'm just using the regional eSIM that covers me for both countries. If you wanna try out Airlo and get a discount on your first eSIM, use my code MAX3. I'll also drop the link down in the description. So give Airlo a try on your next trip abroad. Another way to save money when you're on your trip is to avoid the currency exchange booth. So the currency exchange booths are a little confusing and can be kind of challenging to understand. I would say avoid them altogether because in most cases, your exchange rate when you're exchanging money at an exchange booth is not very good. The exchange rate might not be great, but if the exchange rate is okay, they might charge you a bunch of different commission and fees to exchange your money. The best way to get foreign currency when you're in a different country is through an ATM, but not any regular ATM. What I like to do when I'm in a foreign country is that instead of using those standalone ATMs that are placed randomly throughout the city, I like to actually go to a bank or at least go to an ATM that is by a big branded bank within that country. For me, that feels a little more secure and safer than just going to one of those random ATMs that you find throughout the city. Now, when pulling money out of an ATM, oftentimes these ATMs have the English options. So you don't have to worry about trying to translate what the ATM says more often than not these ATMs have English translations and so you can just select the English button and insert your debit card make sure it's a debit card not a credit card if you put in a credit card into an ATM it's considered a cash advance there's huge interest rates and a bunch of fees on top of doing that so make sure it's a debit card that you put into the ATM as for what is the best debit card to pull cash out of an ATM in a foreign country well there's a couple things that I look for number one is that the card doesn't charge any foreign transaction fees. Foreign transaction fee is like when you use a card in the US, they won't charge you a fee, but when you use a, the card outside the US, they'll charge you a foreign transaction fee. You wanna find a debit card that charges no foreign transaction fee. The second thing is that you want your debit card to reimburse you for all ATM fees. And so that means that different ATMs will charge you different fees and different amounts of fees to withdraw cash out of that ATM. It could vary between like two, three dollars or four dollars. It could be a percentage of the money that you're pulling out. In Mexico, I one time was charged $11 ATM withdrawal fee. So it can vary quite a bit, but you want a debit card that covers that fee and reimburses you for that fee. And so those are the two things, no foreign transaction fees and reimburses you for ATM fees. The two debit cards that I recommend are the Charles Schwab debit and the Betterment debit card. I personally use the Betterment debit card. I also have a grandfathered SoFi debit card as well that I use occasionally. You can't sign up for that card anymore and get ATM fees waived. So that's why I primarily recommend the Betterment debit card or the Charles Schwab debit card. Both accounts have no fees and you can deposit money into those accounts and use that as your travel debit card. I'm not affiliated with either one. I don't use the Charles Schwab debit card, but if you Google anywhere on what the best debit card when it comes to travel is, you'll see plenty of people recommend the Charles Schwab debit card. The Betterment one kind of flies under the radar, but it's the one that I personally use. And I've had a lot of success using that as a debit card to withdraw a cash out of an ATM in a foreign country. So those are the two debit card options for you there. Once you insert your debit card, then you enter your PIN number like you would at a typical ATM in the US. And then you follow the prompts to withdraw the money out of the ATM. But there are a couple red flags that you should be aware of when it comes to these ATMs. The first thing is that some ATMs, the default denominations to withdraw money out of these ATMs might be really high. 
So before you walk up to an ATM, have an idea of how much money you want to withdraw. Is it 400 euros? Is it 500 euros? Maybe it's 100 euros. Maybe it's 200 euros. Have a good idea of how many euros you want to withdraw because some of these ATMs, the default denomination might be super high and they're trying to encourage you to take more money out than you actually should. The benefit of using an ATM card that reimburses you for ATM fees and doesn't charge you foreign transaction fees is that you can take money out as many times as you want. And so if you take 100 euros right now and you need 100 euros later, then you can come back and take that money out. There's no additional fees because you have a debit card that reimburses you for all those fees. So don't stress out about it too much. Take an amount of money out, out of the ATM that you feel comfortable carrying and that you feel comfortable that you would need and spend. Obviously, don't take out too much and then you're stuck with a bunch of foreign currency when you're flying home. I would say err on the side of not having enough cash and then having to pull out additional cash if you need to and taking additional visits the ATM because uh, it would kind of suck to just fly home with like 200 euros sitting in your pocket that you might not spend or you might lose at home before you head back over to the EU. And so that's the first red flag. The second red flag is the one that trips up people the most. It's the conversion options. After you select how much money you're gonna pull out, it'll give you two options to withdraw the money. Typically it would say with conversion and the other option would be without conversion. And so the, they purposely make the with conversion look like it's a better deal. It's actually not a better deal. What they're trying to say when it comes to with conversion is that they want to convert your money for you at their determined exchange rate and they might charge you additional fees on top of that as well. And their exchange rate might not be good as what your bank will convert your money at. The rule of thumb here is that you want your bank to convert the money. You don't want some random ATM's bank to convert your money. So always select without conversion because when you select without conversion, your bank is converting the money and that exchange rate is gonna be a much more favorable conversion rate. This concept is called dynamic currency conversion or DCC for short. And what you will always, always, always wanna do whenever you're traveling abroad is have your bank convert your money. This applies to like not only to ATMs, but also restaurants as well. If you're dining at a restaurant, it'll ask you, do you wanna pay in US dollars or do you wanna pay in the local currency? Always select the local currency because when you select the local currency, that means that your bank will do the money converting for you versus their bank converting the money for you. So that's kind of like two lessons in one there. When you're withdrawing money out of an ATM, always select without conversion. You want your bank to convert your money. If you're at a restaurant or a retailer and they ask you, do you want to convert in US dollars or do you want to convert in the local currency? Always select the local currency because when you select the local currency, your bank is converting your money. So to recap, when you're at an ATM, use a debit card that will reimburse you for foreign transaction fees and also any ATM fees as well to know how much money you wanna withdraw before walking up to an ATM. And then if the ATM asks you without conversion or with conversion, always select without conversion. And you can also get foreign currency at your local bank when you're at home as well, but that can take some time, especially if your bank doesn't normally carry euros or Japanese yens or, or Vietnamese dongs or anything like that. So you have to give some time if you're gonna get money from your local bank and depending on your checking account and stuff like that they may or may not charge you an additional fee to get some of that foreign currency i usually don't recommend getting foreign currency out of a local bank because like you really don't know how much you're gonna need until you're actually in the country and you kind of see the prices of things and things like that and so it's kind of hard to predict how much money or how much foreign currency you'll need in that specific country without actually being there or never being there before so you might exchange too little or too much and so that's kind of like the downside of doing that. And it does take time, like I mentioned previously. So those are some fun money saving tips that you can use on your next trip. Comment below if you have any questions. Check out these videos if you want to save some more money on your next trip. And remember to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.